We've had several options for fantastic Super 35mm cinema zoom lenses for a while now, like the Fujinon MKs, the DZO Film Pictors, Zeiss Lightweight Zoom, Lawa Oom, lenses like that. But with the rise of full frame cinema cameras, customers have been crying out for some decent mid range cinema zooms that do the same job but cover full frame sensors. It's been a decent wait. But now we have two really impressive options on the market. The DZO Film Cutter Ace lineup and the new Lawa Ranger Zoom. So we thought we would get them in one place and compare them side by side for you all. Both the physical design and the image quality. So the Carters have been out for a little bit longer and so there are more of them out and about. People might already be quite familiar with them. There are a set of three lenses, the 35 to 80 millimeter as the main standard lens, 18 to 35 millimeter as the wide and 70 to 135 millimeter as the telephoto. We have the standard and the telephoto lenses here for this video. The Rangers from Lauer are brand new. At the moment, there's just these two lenses, the standard zoom, a 28 to 75 millimeter and the telephoto, a 75 to 180 millimeter. There is a third lens coming soon though, their wide angle, a 16 to 30 millimeter. So in terms of focal lengths, I think for most people, the ranges have the edge here. The big difference is on the wide end of the standard zooms. 28 is far wider than 35, and it will make a big difference to your work. Then the telephoto goes further from 135 to 180, and the unreleased wide angle will be wider as well, 16 compared to 18 on the cutters. So across the board really, the Rangers do have a more practical selection of focal lengths. Apart from that, physically, they are very similar. They're all around the same size and length, both sets have a 0.8 pitch gears which match positions across the lenses in the lineup. They both have 80 millimeter front diameters with 77 millimeter filter threads. They all weigh around one and a half kilos, although the ranges are definitely a bit lighter. Both sets are T2.9 across all lenses and both sets have a good 270 degree focus throw. So physically, the ranges and cutters are very similar in many ways. There are a few things though that are different. The first is a big one, and that is their interchangeable mounts. Both sets do let you change the mounts yourself from EF to PL, and both sets come with both of those as standard. The difference is in the extra ones you can get. With the Carters, you can get an LPL mount, which is nice, but that's it. But on the Rangers, you can get a whole range of mirrorless camera mounts. There's Canon RF, Sony E, Nikon Z, and Panasonic's L mount which is fantastic, as some of the most common cameras which ca customers are gonna be using these lenses on do use those mirrorless mounts. It's certainly not a deal breaker though, as you can just use a mount adapter to go to EF or PL on each of those mounts, and lots of people actually prefer to do it that way because there are mounts out there which will let you add an ND filter behind the lens, and lots of those cameras don't have ND filters built in. So if that's the route you want to go, then you'll want the lenses in EF or PL anyway. The second main physical difference, in my opinion, is that the ranges have a back focus adjustment built into the lens. This is often overlooked by customers actually, but it is fantastic to have. It completely gets around having to use shims and really speeds the whole process of correcting for different mounts or any issues you may find. And considering both sets of these lenses are nicely par focal, you will want to make sure your back focus is set correctly when using them. We did these quick tests here in the showroom, and as you can see, both the Carters and the Rangers are par focal and behaving as expected. Let's dive into more tests and take a closer look at the image. Before we get too deep into the weeds though, let's look at some normal images side by side. So we did some simple comparison setups, one outside with Olivia and one inside with Patrick. These were all filmed in 8K ProRes 422 on the Kinefinity Mavo Edge 8K and both sets of lenses look great. We did notice a few slight differences though. There is a bit of a color shift that is consistent across both sets. The ranges skew a little colder and more magenta maybe, while the cutters are a bit greener. The cutters also seem to be slightly less contrasty than the ranges, especially in the blacks, but only just. 
Which look you prefer is completely subjective, of course. There's no right or wrong there. I also saw a slight difference in the out of focus areas on the standard two lenses. The Carters do seem to have a slightly more of a separation from the background in the center of these shots. And when we look at the interior setup with Patrick against these fairy lights, it does look like the bokeh is ever so slightly larger and more noticeable on the Kata, which would back this up. It is very subtle though. We also noticed a slight sharpness difference. We're looking more at sharpness in a second in more detail, but in these real world tests, the Ranger seemed to be sharper onto the standard sets of lenses, while the Carter was noticeably sharper on the telephoto lens. If we jump over to our more controlled sharpness tests, we can get a bit more detail on this. Firstly, here's each lens in the same position at their widest point. And you can clearly see just how much wider the 28 mm is on the Ranger compared to 35 mm on the Carter. But to compare them, let's set them both to 35 mm and punch into 400%. It is pretty much the same as we saw in the real world test. The Ranger is slightly sharper here, but it's pretty close. At the longer end of the lenses, the difference seems to be less though. At 75 mm, both lenses are performing about the same in terms of detail. Now let's move to the longer lenses. We've changed position here to avoid getting too close to the bookcase when we zoom in all the way, by the way. At 75 mm, they again are very similar. But once we zoom into 135 mm, which is about where we were for those real world tests, we can see that the Carter is more detailed, just like we saw before. And here's them zoomed in all the way to show you the difference between 180 and 135 mm up at the long end. Now let's try and find some imperfections. We set up this harshly backlit scene with a light shone directly down the lens. And the first thing you notice is that the Ranger is keeping a lot more of its contrast than the Carter is. The flares are also quite different with the Ranger having quite pronounced blue orbs while the Carter's range is larger, softer and green. If we move the light, you can see this in practice. The Carter is controlling and softening the actual flare itself a bit more, while the Ranger is controlling that overall ghosting more, especially the area of halation directly around the light itself. We can also use this setup to have a quick little check for chromatic aberration in a bit of a real world situation by looking at those dark legs on the model bird. Both lenses actually do quite well here, but I can definitely see more chromatic aberration on the Ranger than on the Carter. This could change depending on the situation, of course. Chromatic aberration is just one of those things where sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. We also checked for breathing when focus pulling. At the widest on the Carter, we couldn't see any at all. While on the Ranger, there was quite a bit at 28 mm. Zoom in though, and both lenses have next to no breathing. And then it's pretty much the same story with their telephoto lenses. At the widest, the Carter has no breathing, while the Laowa does have a bit. And by the time you zoomed into their longest end on both lenses, they have no breathing at all again. Our last test was then looking at the close focus distance. None of these lenses are macro lenses. On paper, the range of 28 to 75 millimeter is by far the best, at only 49 centimeters minimum distance. Both Carter lenses sit at basically 75 centimeters and the longer Ranger is the worst at 89 centimeters. Overall, we have been very impressed by both sets of lenses. Trying to choose between these for people is going to be a challenge. Both are very good options, very practical to use and impressive optically as well. I do think a lot of it is going to come down to personal preference. How important each of those different qualities we've tested here are for you personally and in your work. It is a tough choice though this one, it really is. I would love to hear all your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you want to buy either of these sets for your own work, or of course if you just want to come in and test them out for yourself, let the team here at Pro-V know and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.